And in the text today, Jesus warns us of these divisions. He knows what's coming. He knows that what he's doing is not going to be easy. He knows that what he's doing could break up families. Even mother-in-law against daughter-in-law. It could happen. Jesus warns us that the kingdom will not arrive in a neat package. A little bow on it. Ain't happening. It's not going to be quick and orderly. It's going to be fraught with peril. This could hurt. This, the whole notion of following Jesus, this could hurt. We may have to let go of our worldly attachments. We may have to let go of every single one of our assumptions about our relationships with creation and with all the people that live in creation. We may have to give up our assumptions about our relationship with God. We may have to admit that we don't understand. We may have to ask for help. These are things that are hard. It's difficult. It's not easy. But Jesus doesn't call us to do the easy stuff. This is the guy who calls on us to love our enemies. Love your enemies. It's hard. You ever try to do that? It's difficult. You know, in my own life, I've asked um, in prayer for help to let go of grudges. I struggle with that. It's so easy to hold on to a grudge. It's hard to let them go. You want to keep them around. I want to keep them around because it feels good every time I think about it. But I know I know I can't hold on to those things. And so when I read the, when I read the Bible and I'm challenged to do difficult things like love my enemies, um, difficult things like following Jesus in a world that's already kindled, a world that's already on fire, you know, I have, to, I have to pause and I have to reflect and I have to ask for the Spirit to come into my life. I have trouble doing it by myself. You know, there's something else about the Bible I want to mention. You may agree with me, you may not. Um, but I think that sometimes you can read a verse and it can mean two things. Right? It used to be that when people sat down to study the Bible, interpret the Bible, they thought, well, the, whoever wrote this had one thing in mind and the whole focus of biblical interpretation was to figure out what that one thing was. Because it could only mean one thing. But I don't think that's entirely true. I think sometimes... A Bible verse can mean two things, and they can coexist and live together in the text and be in dialogue. Right? They can be in conversation. You know, John Wesley, y'all like John Wesley. John Wesley had another way of reading this particular text from Luke. In his uh, notes on the Bible, what Wesley describes Jesus as spreading the fire of heavenly love all over the earth. Spreading the fire of heavenly love all over the earth. That through the flames we might have hope. Hope that through the work of the Holy Spirit our divided world is being reconciled to God. See, the Bible, the Bible is a story of the world being reconciled to God. 
That's what it's about. And that story, that story, this story, it's our story too. It's the story we live into today, in 2016, however many thousands of years later. We're still adding to this story. It's still going on. The kingdom is still coming into the world. It's not over yet. It didn't just end in Revelation. The story's still going on, and that's our story. So, as you're studying the text this week, I know all of you will study the text this week. I know everybody reads the lectionary every week. But as you're studying the text, and as you're being challenged by the text, I, I say let that be a point of reflection. If you find something that's particularly challenging, that's difficult, stop and reflect. Reflect on the fires in your world that you can ask God for strength to endure. Reflect on the divisions in your world that you can ask the Holy Spirit to heal. Reflect on the emotion of Jesus who urges us and challenges us to spread the fire of heavenly love all over the earth.